Hey guys, it's Danielle Walker from Against All Grain back on my Facebook Live every Tuesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. Please let me know um, that you're here and where you're from. Today I'm going to show you a brand new recipe for a paleo grain-free blueberry galette. Um, I made it the other day on my Snapchat and everybody got super excited about it, so I thought I would show you today. First things first, I'm going to turn my oven on. Um, 325 degrees. Okay. Uh, sorry, hello. <laughs> um, so 325 degrees, go ahead and get that preheating. We've got super simple ingredients. It's so delicious. Um, the first time I made it was the other day. I kind of combined a few of my other recipes, my shortbread cookies, which I know you guys are all huge fans of, and then my pie crust um, from an old Thanksgiving recipe. So I kind of mashed those together and came up with a really, really good freeform tart dough. So I'm super excited to show you guys that today. A couple things that I wanted to cover really quickly, and then I'll start saying hello and reading where you guys are from. Um, there's a few things that I wanted to tell you guys about because you miss so much here on Facebook. It doesn't always show you everything. So number one, there's a brand new recipe that went out today on my blog for firecracker popsicles or bomb pops. Um, they're red, white, and blue. The first layer is raspberry and strawberry, and then there's a blueberry layer and a coconut lime layer. They're so good, so make sure you make them for your 4th of July festivities. And then I also put up a brand new shopping with me at Costco video. Um, you guys all loved my Whole Foods one so much that I went to Costco, took you with me, showed you all of my favorite products. Um, and so that is up on my YouTube channel where you can, by the way, find dozens more of these kind of cooking demos. So make sure you head over there when this is over. Um, and let's see, what else? Oh, exciting news. Um, Barnes & Noble is going to be an exclusive seller of signed copies of my third book, Celebrations. Um, so if you, my dog is shaking, sorry, live, live TV. Um, if you want to pre-order a copy from them, which you can do now, uh, there's a limited amount, um, but if you pre-order and you get in within that amount, you will get a signed copy of my book. It'll be shipped to you the day that it releases, September 27th, on your doorstep before any other stores have it, um, and it'll be signed. So again, um, the link is going to be in the comments for that. Make sure you head over and pre-order that so that you reserve a signed copy because they will run out. Um, I'm only signing so many, um, and so make sure that you get one. All right, so I'm going to get started. I'm getting my... Um, ingredients here because I just want to make sure. So I like to use a food processor, um, which you've probably seen in some of my recipes. Um, the reason that I do that most of the time is because it helps grind the flowers up so that they're more fine and it resembles more kind of um, closely to an all-purpose flour. So um, please, again, guys, if you haven't been here for this, um, make sure that you ask questions along the way. I've got my trusty assistant, Sydney, behind the camera there, so she will read out as many as she can, and I'll try to answer them. Um, and I love to hear from you, so please ask some questions, and then we'll do some questions at the end as well. Um, really quickly, I'm fluffing my flour. Um, I like to do this with a fork usually, but almond flours, cashew flours, coconut flour, they get kind of clumped up, and my... Um, way of measuring for my recipes is the scoop and sweep method is kind of what I like to call it. Um, I don't pack it down. I also don't weigh it. So if you're ever, you know, using any of my recipes, make sure you break up the clumps and then just go ahead and scoop that cup in there and level it off. No packing down necessary. Any questions so far? What's the difference between almond flour and almond meal? Okay, so the biggest difference, and I talk about this frequently, almond meal typically still has skins. Um, and it's usually a little bit more coarsely ground. Uh, so they are not interchangeable for baked goods recipes. Almond meal will make things pretty um, dense. They'll also sink in the middle and they'll be a little bit more oily. So you really want a blanched, finely ground, really finely ground almond flour. My favorite brands for that are Wellbeats and um, Honeyville. You can find Honeyville actually at Costco, which is fantastic. And then the other um, way you can find it is on Amazon. So you, um, I think I said I'm using cashew flour. <laughs> um, I use a lot of almond flour, but for this crust, I really love the cashew flour because it makes it really buttery and smooth. You can substitute almond flour in one for one for this if you want. The flavor will be just a little bit different. It won't be quite as light and quite as buttery, but you can substitute. So I'm using two and a quarter cup cashew flour. Is almond flour interchangeable with coconut flour? No, it is not at all. <laughs> um, so, and sorry, I'm putting in one tablespoon of um, coconut flour while we talk about that. So coconut flour, if you notice, I usually only use a tablespoon or two, sometimes up to a quarter cup, um, well, occasionally up to a half a cup. 
um, of coconut flour. Coconut flour is dehydrated, so that's the biggest difference. Almond flour, cashew flour, those types of things, they're not dehydrated, so they're not going to soak up a ton of moisture. Coconut flour is dehydrated coconut meat that's ground up. And so by nature, anything that's dehydrated, when you add liquid, it rehydrates. Um, and so it soaks up every bit of moisture. So if you see recipes with coconut flour in them, typically they call for a lot of eggs and a lot of, of um, liquid. And so they are not interchangeable by any means. Um, honestly, I don't even have an equation for you to substitute it out because they have completely different properties. So typically when I add coconut flour, it's to absorb some of the oils and moisture. So that's why a lot of times I combine it with other ones. Okay, so one tablespoon coconut and then um, just a quarter teaspoon of sea salt. Anything else while yes. I'm working? Um, where can you find cashew flour? So cashew flour is also made by Wellbe, so you can find that on Amazon. We will add the link to that. And um, also, Trader Joe's had it for a very long time. I think they called it cashew meal, but it was also very finely ground, so that's fine. The other thing, cashews actually do pretty well making it yourself. Um, and so if you just take raw, unsalted, unroasted cashews and you put them into either a coffee grinder or a food processor, grind it till it's really fine, but not too far because you'll get cashew butter. Um, and then I like to put it through a mesh seed just to make sure that you get any of those big particles out of there. Okay, so um, I'm also going to, I gotta keep working while I answer your questions here. Um, so then I have one quarter cup plus three tablespoons, so about seven tablespoons of arrowroot. Um, and I use arrowroot to make these doughs pliable. Um, I like arrowroot over tapioca, although they are interchangeable. I can't tolerate tapioca. It gives me a stomach ache almost instantly. I think the biggest difference too um, is that arrowroot is a plant, um, and I think that for some reason my body can tolerate it better. Um, I didn't eat it for a very long time, but after a few years of being grain-free, I was able to introduce it in somewhat small amounts. I still don't do full doughs that are made with only arrowroot. Those definitely cause stomach issues for me, but a bit here and there is okay. Um, so I'm just gonna process this for about 30 seconds to get it really nice and finely ground, and then I'll add the rest of my ingredients. Questions? <laughs> um, yeah, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay. Um, Paul said, I've always read that cashews aren't paleo and that they are fumigated pretty heavily. Any thoughts on this? Yeah, um, so I typically like to soak and dehydrate my nuts whenever I can remember to do so. So that would be your best bet. Um, you know, it, it's kind of up for debate on whether or not they're paleo. They could be considered a legume. There's a lot of really great articles on Mark Sisson's website about it, and he does classify them as being okay. And so I tend to default to him because he has a lot of really great information on there, and I read about it a while back and decided they're okay. Honestly, I always say if it works for you and it doesn't cause you any problems, then do it. If it does cause you issues, then like I said, you know, substitute it out for almond flour, but um, we will find that link and we'll post it in the comments when this is done. Okay, so I am gonna keep working here. Um, we are adding some sweetener. I like maple syrup. You could do honey as well. The only problem with honey is it does brown pretty easily as do nut flours. So um, you just wanna be careful and not over bake it because it will brown. Any other questions? Do you ever use cassava flour? I don't. Um, you know, sorry, <laughs> food processes are loud. Um, so because I don't react well to tapioca and it is made from the cassava plant, um, I kind of stayed away from it. I've had a few things made with it and I've had some bloating and things that we don't need to talk about on, on live. TV. <laughs> um, so I just stayed away from it because of that. I know a lot of people in the paleo grain free community are using it lately. Um, so, you know, feel free to try it out and if you can tolerate it, great. Um, do you have an alternate sub for the arrowroot for someone who's SCD? Yeah, so um, I have a couple other pie crust recipes that don't use arrowroot. Um, when I was still in my SCD days, um, I didn't use it, so I would suggest just defaulting to one of those. Sometimes you could add a little bit extra coconut flour or, or a cashew flour until you get that right consistency, but the arrowroot is what really holds this together. It's kind of what makes it a little bit crispy and makes it more pliable. So this particular recipe, I would suggest just trying maybe one of my other doughs. I'm gonna run to the fridge and just grab my butter. Um, so for a good pie crust, you want really, really cold butter. I'm using unsalted grass-fed butter here. I tried this with other fats. Butter really just makes it so much more airy and, and buttery. 
um, and crispy. And so you can definitely substitute in palm shortening from a sustainably sourced company like Tropical Traditions um, if you want, um, but this makes this crust amazing. So definitely make sure you get grass fed. It's better for you than conventional butter. Um, I've cut it up into little cubes because you want it to kind of get spread throughout the dough and not overworked. That's what helps make it flaky. Um, and this is five tablespoons and I'm just going to pulse it in until it's like pea-sized pieces. Any other questions while I do that? Yeah, um, can you use coconut nectar instead of maple syrup? Yeah, you definitely could. I think um, the kind of rule of thumb is if you're substituting sweeteners, you just really wanna make sure that you use a liquid sweetener for a liquid sweetener. I think where you run into trouble is if you're taking out maple or honey, which is a liquid, and then you're adding in something like stevia because your doughs will be dry. Uh, what's your favorite brand of coconut flour? Say that one more time. <laughs> What's your favorite brand of coconut flour? Oh, I love Tropical Traditions. Um, I order a lot from them. I also just love them as a company. They're this sweet little family-run business that's been in the Philippines for years and years. Their quality of their coconut flour is fantastic, and it's what I test all my recipes with. Uh, but otherwise, I also buy Nutiva, especially if I see it at Costco. So that's a good one, too. And you know what? Um, we've also tested quite a bit of my recipes with um, Trader Joe's coconut flour, and it's good, too. So I'm actually, I know I've promised you guys this for a long time, but I am working on a post um, about the difference in coconut flours. They really do run the gamut. Um, it's really interesting when you test one of the same recipe, how different they can all be. So I'm just pulsing it a couple more times to get that butter broken up, but I don't want to overdo it um, because I really do want those kind of pea-sized pieces of butter. Uh, so I actually have this dough already made in the fridge because it needs to chill for four hours. Not only does that help the coconut flour absorb, absorb excuse me, some of the moisture, um, but it kind of just helps the whole dough get a little bit more firm. It makes it a little bit easier to roll out. So I'll grab that one because they didn't want to make you guys sit around for four hours. Um, I'll grab that one out of the fridge and I'll show you how to roll it out and how to make our filling. It's all really, really simple. And then I'll just pop it in the oven. Any other questions while I grab that? And yeah. Wrap a little bit? Um, how do you store your almond flour? So I like to keep, I, I do a lot of uh, recipe testing, so it's going to be different for someone who's not baking as often as I am, but I like to keep a jar this big, it's so, so heavy, um, in my pantry, and that's just out at room temperature, and then I keep the rest in the fridge or in the freezer. So in the freezer, it can last almost a year. Um, in the fridge, I would say three months or so, um, and then on the counter, I would say just a few weeks. So it just depends how often you use it. Um, that's kind of my rule for it. So I've got, um, when the dough finished, I just packed it into a ball, flattened it into a disc. Um, putting it into a disc helps to chill it more evenly and a little bit quicker. Um, if you're short on time, you definitely could pop this in the freezer. Um, with that said, you can also make this ahead of time and have it in your fridge for probably two days, otherwise I'd say it, get, it would get too dry. Um, and then you could definitely put it in your freezer and leave it in there for probably six months or so. Um, if you were to do that, I would suggest thawing it in the refrigerator overnight so it doesn't get too soggy. Um, and then you can just take it out and roll it. And so, sorry, it's a little loud. Um, so if you are you know, hosting people for 4th of July, for instance, or what I made this for the other night was my father-in-law's birthday, um, it would be nice to be able to have it made up ahead of time so that you have one less thing to do. I also baked the entire um, galette about an hour and a half or so before my guests came, and then I just turned the oven back on and reheated it, which was really nice too. So um, I'm gonna let that dough sit out at room temperature for just a couple minutes, just so it's a little bit easier uh, to be able to roll out. And in the meantime, I'm gonna put together my super simple, really, really flavorful um, filling. So Asher this year insisted on getting some blueberry plants. So we've been growing blueberries in our backyard and whatever the birds haven't eaten, um, we've been picking and he loves it. And so that's partially why I decided to do blueberry. You could definitely do peach. Um, I think adding peaches even to this one would be really nice. I think a pear one would be really great. Strawberry rhubarb would be really, really yummy. Um, so I've got two cups of blueberries. And then I'm just going to grab my tablespoon. And I'm going to do about a tablespoon of coconut sugar. And a tablespoon of maple syrup. 
And again, those sweeteners can kind of be interchangeable. If you have something else on hand, honey would be really good. Um, honestly, you don't need too much sweetener at all, um, but a little bit helps to kind of bring out the natural juices and turn it into kind of a syrup um, in this. So definitely want something in there to help. And then to thicken this as well so that the juices don't just all run right out of the galette, um, I've got two teaspoons of arrowroot. Do you have any other questions? You can <laughs> pause me. <laughs> where, where can Jill find your glass flower jars? Oh, sorry, glass flower. In my head, when you said glass flower, I was thinking glass slipper. For some reason, <laughs> like Cinderella, I have no idea why. Glass flower jars are from the container store. Some of them are from Ikea. Um, wow, sorry. I guess I've been watching too many um, cartoons with my son. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna zest one lemon. And then I'm just going to add about a teaspoon and a half of the lemon juice. This also helps um, the juices come out and it kind of releases the natural pectin in um, the fruits. Any other questions? Uh, what brand of food processor is that? Oh, so this is a Magimix. Um, it can be found on William Sonoma's website. Um, Amazon, I believe, sells it. I also have used a Cuisinart. Those are great. I know people ask all the time. I can put the link um, for you. Um, this is a I think a 14 cup it's big um, and I love it but really honestly my mom has like the black and decker one that you can find at Target or at Costco and that works fine um, I really I think you know I mean it's nice if you're gonna be doing a lot of cooking it's definitely nice to have one like this but I don't think it's necessary I think if you were to choose um, a high-speed blender would actually be more of a, a beneficial investment to be honest Okay, so um, just a little bit of lemon juice. If you saw my Snapchat the other day, I lost a seed and it was impossible to get it out. It was so slippery. Um, so I almost baked it with it, but I finally got it. So I'm going to strain with my fingers this time. Uh, what flower sub would you suggest if you are allergic to nuts? So I haven't tested it, so I can't verify for sure, but I know it does typically work. I would say um, finely ground sunflower seeds. Uh, definitely make sure that you get raw because if they're roasted and have salt, it's not going to taste very good. Um, and yeah, that should work. I mean, I would still use the arrowroot and the coconut if you can. Um, that those are kind of essential in this, but you should try sunflower. That, that would be a good idea. Otherwise, I have a nut free um, graham cracker crust in Against All Grain, and that could be a good option as well. It won't be quite as pliable because it doesn't have the arrowroot, but um, it should still bake up nicely. Uh, what brand of chocolate Whoops. chips do you use? <laughs> um, chocolate chips. I use um, Enjoy Life, which are all allergy free, so they're made in a nut free facility and they're dairy free. I'm gonna keep talking while I grab my rolling pin. Um, they're dairy free, nut free, gluten free, soy free, and um, those are great. Otherwise, um, I just like to chop up like a really dark chocolate bar is also some, sometimes my favorite. Um, and then, yeah. Um, do you ever use cashew flour for cookies? I do. Actually, um, my real deal chocolate chip cookies taste amazing with cashew flour. Um, it's written with almond flour, but cashew flour can be pretty much subbed one for one for almond flour always. It can be a little bit more on the greasy side, so if you notice, um, your batters or your flours are a little bit too moist, I would just add in like a teaspoon of coconut flour to help kind of offset that. So I'm rolling that dough that I chilled for four hours um, into a circle. So the nice thing about galettes is that honestly the more rustic the better. Um, it doesn't matter if your edges are cracked, it doesn't matter if it's a perfect circle, it's essentially, if you're not sure what it is, it's kind of like a freeform tart. Um, there's no transferring to pie dishes, which with grain-free crust, they can often break and crack. Um, and so this is super easy and it's really beautiful and people are gonna think that you spent a ton of time on it, but in reality, you could throw this together in like 15 minutes besides the chilling time. Obviously, it's taking me a lot longer because I'm trying to multitask and answer your questions and do this at the same time. Um, but you want to roll it to about a quarter of an inch thick. Questions? Um, Megan, great question. Hey, Megan. What is your number one baking tip when changing from traditional to paleo baking? Ooh, um, my number one tip is just to not try to substitute coconut flour for <laughs> anything. Um, I remember when I first started and I thought I could substitute coconut flour one for one for all-purpose flour. And I remember making a... Um, 
pumpkin bread. That's what it was. And I put in like two cups of coconut flour and it was just this brick and it was so disgusting. <laughs> so um, I would say you have to kind of throw out everything you know about baking um, and really relearn. So that that's probably my number one tip. I know that's not a very fun tip, but that is kind of, you know, I'm going to go just a tiny bit thinner on this. Um, yeah, that's kind of my number one tip. Oh, shoot. Um, I tried. I tried, but I knew I shouldn't have. Um, the reason why I'm rolling with plastic wrap and parchment is because not only are grain-free doughs kind of um, finicky and they can break, but they're also super sticky. Um, so I always roll out on parchment or plastic wrap. I thought that I was invincible and could do it, but I'm not. And so I'm putting the plastic wrap over it. So there's another tip for you. Roll out on plastic wrap or parchment. Can we find this recipe somewhere after the demo? You will be able to, but not yet. Um, I literally just created it on Sunday. And so um, I need a little bit more time to take some pictures of it and get it up on the blog. Um, but there are brand new recipes coming to you every single week on Tuesdays on the blog. So make sure that you check back. Again, like I said, those firecracker pops are up there now. So I will work as hard as I can. Next week, um, unless we decide to change things around, but next week is actually a dairy-free cheesecake that I'm super excited about. I think you guys are gonna love. So that'll be up next and we'll try to work on this one as fast as we can. Um, back to this, <laughs> I just dumped all the blueberries out into a big mound. I'm gonna spread them so there's just a couple inches of dough. And then for a galette, all you do is just pull the dough up over it and you kind of pinch as you go so that if there's any cracked pieces or anything, it holds together. Um, but you just kind of lift it and go around and make it look really rustic, which is the greatest part. Um, okay, any other questions? Oh, and by the way, if, it, if it's sticking at all to the parchment, just kind of lift the parchment and help. it'll kind of help it fall down onto the blueberries. Does I'm almond sure. flour contain a lot of carbs? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, that's the thing about grain-free baking. It's definitely higher in fat and in carbs than some things, but you know, it also has hard healthy fats, it's high in protein, um, so it just depends. I would actually be more concerned about the sugars um, if you're watching your carbs. Most people in the paleo world, um, unless you're having to watch it for a specific condition, um, people don't count that stuff um, anymore and they try not to focus on it. So it really depends why you're why you're watching it, obviously. And, and again, like I say, anytime you're making a dessert or a treat, it should be considered as a dessert or a treat just like you would if you were making things with white sugar and white flour. Just because this is grain free, I would not say it's healthy, um, but it's a great alternative for a treat when you want one. So if you can see this, um, I just kind of moved it up and anytime it cracked, I pinched it together and anytime it started to fall apart, I just kind of just pushed it back together. <laughs> um, and that's the greatest part, it's really forgiving. Um, if, you're, if you're working in a really hot place, um, maybe you, you might want to put it in the freezer. Um, the warmer it gets, the harder it gets to work with. And then I'm just going to slide a baking sheet right underneath it um, and then pop that in the oven for 40 to 50 minutes. And I'm going to check on it and see, oh, I forgot a really essential part. Hold on. <laughs> this is, <laughs> so when I do YouTube videos or when you guys watch things on the Food Network and such, there's lots of editing involved. They have things already made. They pull things out of the oven that have already been cooked. Some things are not even fully cooked. Um, but this is live and there's no editing. So this is um, an egg wash. It's just one egg that's whisked with about a teaspoon of coconut milk. Um, otherwise, if you don't do this, which you could absolutely leave it off, or you could even just brush it with just coconut milk, this is an egg-free dessert. Um, so if you leave the egg wash off, it's safe for all of those that are egg-free, but the egg wash helps, first of all, brown um, the crust. It makes it beautiful and golden, and it also helps make it get a little bit more flaky and kind of crispy on the outside. Okay, any other questions while I'm doing this? Yeah, um, so why do you not weigh your flowers? Cup measure is so unpredictable. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't weigh it because I found early on when I first started writing recipes that people don't weigh things, um, especially home cooks. And so I started doing it that way because it's what my audience was asking for and what you guys were looking for. So um, we did just add all of the weights um, to my app, Cookery. So if you prefer to cook that way, you can find now um, the metric conversions. So if you have that, that'll be helpful for you. I also do have conversions in the back of my books. Um, but yes, it can be unpredictable, but I find that that's 
the way that the majority of the people who are following my recipes cook is just with the scooping and so that's why I try to recommend you know my certain ingredients and, and things like that and you know grain-free baking does not rely as much on the ratios and things like that as conventional baking so I also don't find that the measurements make that much of a difference um, if you're you know, doing a slightly heaping cup as opposed to a perfectly leveled um, in grain-free baking, besides with coconut flour, it won't make <laughs> a massive difference. Okay, so now I'm going to put this in. It has the egg wash on it. I'm gonna come up close here so you can see it. Um, can you see that? <laughs> okay, that's going to go in. The blueberries are going to get beautiful and bubbly and they're gonna have that gorgeous, purple juice coming out of it. They're going to get softer and the crust comes out so perfectly golden. Again, I'm not going to make you sit here for 40 minutes, but I will show you the finished product a little bit later this evening. So make sure you check back. Um, we ate it with vanilla ice cream and a little sprig of mint and it was so good. Um, but you could, you know, use coconut whipped cream or something like that too. So while I'm here, I'll answer some more questions and then um, you can find me next week. No other questions? No. All right, good. Well, perfect. Well, thank you for joining me. Facebook Live. Again, I will be here every Tuesday, four o'clock um, Pacific. Sometimes I'll be answering questions, just sitting at my desk. Um, sometimes I'll be showing you something. Um, so if you have any special requests, make sure to leave them below. Excuse me, um, make sure to check out all of the links that we're leaving in the comments and anything that I wasn't able to answer, we'll try to go back and answer a few of them later. And um, the last thing that I was going to say was, oh, I know, <laughs> these videos live here on Facebook. So if you missed it, if you joined late, you can go back and watch it. You can watch it next week. Um, you can watch last week's or the week before. Um, I also put them up on YouTube later. So anybody that's not on Facebook, which why aren't you on Facebook? Um, we put on YouTube so you can go and watch them there. Um, you can share them with friends or you can email them or whatever you want. Or if you need to watch this again so you have all the measurements, um, you can watch it there too. So thanks again. See you guys um, next Tuesday, 4 o'clock, 7 Pacific, uh, 7 Eastern, sorry. <laughs>